Hey, what's up? It's your boy Steve Cardenas, aka Rocky the Red Power Ranger, and you are watching Blurdography. So check it out. said that I was um, one of his favorite characters in from my season. Um, I really felt like um, the character Mike that I had the opportunity uh, to embody was um, very similar to Hector um, and, and what I've gone through in my own life. I just didn't think that um, it was going to transpire on film the way it was in, in my normal life. Um, me personally, Hector Dave Jr., I, I've been kicked out of everything I've ever been in, even church. <laughs> yeah, I was just a rambunctious kid and always lived on my on my terms. I was raised in a single family home. My mom gave me a lot of responsibility, and so with that same responsibility, I go to school with that same attitude. I go, you know, after school daycare, martial arts, ROTC, dance. The list goes on. Um, I was even expelled from school from fighting, but I was the first one ever in history in my um, in Florida to go back to the same school that I was expelled from and graduate with my class. So with Mike's character arc from the straight get-go of him not falling in and being a subordinate, not being a team player, um, was just, it was um, it was very hard to hear that mentor was taking away my more work. Even, even Hector, it resonated with Hector. And, and that's why I think that first episode um, that aired, um, um, it really built up that Mike had a long journey ahead. Um, and um, I hate uh, getting emotional, but it was just very um, near and dear to my heart that, um, that at the end of the episode, Mike got to get his morpher back and got to go and show that um, he's a team player and um, he wants to be involved in this team that is going to change his life forever. Just like when I got the call that I was going to be the Green Ranger and change my life, my family's life. Um, and then um, R.I.P. is one of the greatest ever, Jason David Frank, when we did the Legendary Battle. I go around the world and I teach kids that this photo that you took of me is living proof that dreams come true. You know, so maybe that has something to do with why, um, and it's a special thing. I'm not just, I'm not just an actor. You know, I, 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 I am, I'm still a human being, and I'm a family person in the series. And so I feel like it's very designed for me to be in the position that I'm in. Um, I love what I do, and, and it all started with um, a little bit of faith. You know, or so. Yes, sir. Uh, so you have a project in post-production, Youthquake. Can you tell us a little bit more about your involvement in this project? Absolutely. It's part of the reason why I moved back to Florida is because um, Youthquake was the first one um, working with Positive Pictures, uh, the production company in Florida. And I heard that um, uh, one of my uh, uh, co-stars was going to be Richie Ramone, the last living member of the Ramones, mm -hmm. the band. Um, and so, um, and it was a great project about a girl that gets abducted and her father's getting accused of it. And um, it was great because I got to play detective. You know, I you know I uh, I have never really had great experiences with police. <laughs> um, so being being a police is like um, you know Ice T being a you know police officer, <laughs> police officer on you know Law and Order. And so yeah, uh, Youthquake is um, hopefully the world gets to see it soon. I've done three projects since then. Um, one with where I brought Najee Detej, who plays Kevin Blue Ranger. Um, I hired him to play the lead in my Christmas film. And hopefully that'll be out this year as well. Um, so very excited for Youthquake, the different side of um, of Hector and the roles that I'm taking on. So yeah. Uh, so I'm Rizal Merchant from Trivia Secrets Podcast, and my question is: Did you get a chance to watch Sin Panzer with Super Sentai that was the source material for Art of the Samurai? And if so, how much of the Sentai inspired your role in your character, which you did for? Uh, Totally, uh, I love Chiaki's take on on um, on the character. I think he did. I think he killed it. Um, but um, when we got there and arrived, what's up, Danny? 
come join. Come in anytime you want. Um, um, and so, yes, uh, Jonathan, the producer, who's been the producer since the beginning of time, uh, Jonathan T, gave us all DVDs of She Came to the Watch, right? So we're all watching it every night, you know, after, you know, acting class, after um, samurai training. And, um, and long story short, um, long story short, um, when we came to work the first day, he's like, oh, you remember those DVDs? And She Kendra told you to do uh, uh, research? Forget everything you watched. So that was only for reference. And so um, it was cool because we got to see the dynamic, how the Japanese show is treated compared to the American incarnations. Um, and they go hard. The, you know, the same Japanese versions go hard. Um, uh, and I'm very proud of, um, of what they did. And so, um, but we got to add our own spin to it and that's be a, a little bit of a younger generation with our Power Ranger Samurai compared to the Shikinger. Thank you. Absolutely. There, is that good for you guys? Check one two, check one two. Check one three, check one three. This is a samurai sandwich right here. <laughs> um, and then we're just answering. Um, yeah, it's the media thing, and so if we're just like, selecting. Uh, okay. Uh, just to piggyback off of your uh, your experience with Jason and Frank, you know, how did that photo op come come about with the with the passage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, again, I, I I share with you guys that I am a fan first. I was a fan even of uh, these guys. You know, I just have been a fan of the series. Um, first, and then you know my dreams came true when I got to get in front of Iris Hampton, and, um, and my life changed forever. But how that photo came was um, I did not know Jason David Frank was going to be a part of Legendary Battle, and so I got there and I missed the cast van because I'm on Puerto Rican time, and so I got in this van and the Kiwi driver says, "Hey brother, good to see you. Welcome back. But this isn't your car." And I'm like, "All right. I mean, who's this? I, I can't tell you, brother, but you got to get out." So I get out the van, and sure enough, the icon himself, Jason Deerbrain's walking and my mouth dropped to the ground. And he just befriended me. We had the same trailer, me and him and Reggie Rolly. And uh, when we were on set, we're in that legendary battle. We're in there, me faces getting ready to take on the world, you know, with the Megaforce cast. And I remember they called the cut. We had a, like a switching the camera around. And I looked at Jason, I'm like, Jason, Tommy, I mean Jason. Uh, <laughs> can I put on the shield? And he was like, brother, come on. I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna pass it to you because you're worthy of it. And um, so that's where that photo became. Um, we had plenty of plans to hopefully one day do Forever Green, which hopefully one day will transpire in his honor. But yeah, and that's why I go around and I have that photo, this rep free in my head, and I tell kids that dreams come true. You know, no matter how big or how small they are. So, Early you mentioned um, about you being kicked out of school and you going back and graduating from the same school. What motivated that turnaround for you? Uh, well, I, I have a Puerto Rican mother that didn't give me no choice. <laughs> she said you either have a place to live with me, and you get back to school and you get straight A's, or you know you hit the streets. And you know I chose to you know respect my mother, and you know um, and I'll never forget going in front of the school board just like this with my mother and pleading my case, and you know my case was valid enough for me to graduate with my class and go back. I was almost kicked out, was expelled from high school for fighting. Yes. What, 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 when did you go to school? Uh, I graduated in 2008. Okay, a little bit after. Just a little bit, nothing, nothing much. What do you mean you didn't spell? Well, you must have. I mean, it was, it was my third one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is for you. Uh, so, like Johnny Young Bosch, you have done a lot of voice acting and you've voice acted in Devil May Cry. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Um, well, unlike Johnny Young Bosch, I have not done a lot. Acting. I've done voice acting for a character that's become a lot famous, just to clarify. Um, and it's wonderful, it's fun, it's a lot of fun. Like, you, know, you roll on in in your sweats, t shirt, it's easy, there's no hair or makeup, there's no works to go through. Spit out some lines, go home, there's a max of four hours you can do that because your voice can get straight from doing that too much. What a great one. I wish I, I wish I was doing as many voice roles as Johnny Young Bosch. <laughs> so Hector, for you, um, you being a fan, like you said, and you mentioned JDF, like when you got the call that you were going to be the Green Ranger and that legacy there, how did that feel? And then now even more, like how does it feel to know that you're carrying on like the legacy of like the Green, like a Green Ranger? Oh, for sure. I'll never forget. I was driving this girl that was dating. Uh, convertible at the time, and I got the call. Um, like, hey, what's up, Green Ranger? From my agent. I'm like, 
holy crap. <laughs> I pulled over on Van Nuys Boulevard, and I did what anybody in my position, a fan or whatever, an actor would do. I jumped on the back of that convertible, and I did a backflip and said, yes, my dreams came true. <laughs> and, um, and even the cops pulled over, like, hey, man, what are you doing? I'm like, hey, I'm a Power Ranger. <laughs> you, know, you save lives for real. I'm about to do it fake on TV. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it was just exciting, because like I said, I was a fan first, and um, I heard that the audition was going around town. Um, kind of like one of those episodes in Entourage where everybody just knows what's going on in Hollywood. And it was just one of those moments where everybody was going out for the role to come back for the Power Rangers. Mm. And I called my agent, I'm like, why am I not going out for that? You, didn't, you know I do all my own stunts, martial arts, et cetera, et cetera. And she got me in the room with Iris, and uh, the rest was history. Right, one more question. We lived that moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, as far as being the Six Rangers, how did y'all approach those roles uh, since you're not the, like, the, the, the core original five? Like the arrogant pricks we were. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't stand for myself. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, uh, um, who, remember the movie Saving Private Ryan? Oh, yeah. Yes. Right? So like, Matt Damon was like the outsider. Mm. And like when they filmed that, like all those guys, they, they slept outside, they slept in the rain, you know, all the main characters. And he was in the hotel and he sat in the jacuzzi and drank champagne. And he deliberately became this like psychological outsider. So when they're filming and they finally found him, there's like contempt for him. And so like I didn't do that, but I did something kind of similar where I just went, okay, I'm arriving a little late into the season. And there's always that thing, if you if you're a guest role on a show or you arrive late in the game, you're not like forged in the original cast family. And that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. It's like arriving to a new school. Any of you guys ever done that? Yeah. Anyone ever done that? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. And there's that outsider vibe, right? Mm -hmm. So you gotta like work your way in, you know, but if you try too hard, you're a dick. And if you don't try hard enough, you stay out on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it's that's true. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's that vibe where I thought, well, it's already set up for me. So I'm the sixth guy. I got the responsibility of all the six rangers, J.D. Dan, all these great guys. And then, like, what's my take on that? Because everyone's got to bring a different slice to the pie. If you start copying guys before you, you look like a dick. Exactly. So you got to bring some new, fresh blood. And I, that was my angle. It's like a bit of comedy, a bit of humor. He was also an alien, so he's living in a human body. So there's that thing like Mork and Mindy, like Robin Williams, like kind of goofy, strange thing, awesome. like being a human being, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I kind of like worked, I came in. jealous. That was, that was just a prick. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my angle, like trying to, and, and in the end, like, you know, in the end it kind of worked its own chemistry, like the cast, we all got along like a tight family. But it was like, if you watch that, those episodes, it was literally live to ear, like, who's this guy? The actors in real life were like, who is? And I was like, I'm just a stranger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was the chemistry that went down. As, that was my first the character. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. Is there any last words that you want to say to your fans or anybody? Uh, I think this guy had a question. And it didn't seem like anybody got to him. Okay, yeah. do you want to go ahead and ask that question? Yeah, it's a quick question for uh, Mr. Dwayne. Oh. Um, so, same question I asked Hector earlier. Um, how is it for you adapting your source material for? from the Super Sentai into your role in Overdrive? I tried to, I gleaned a little bit of it, but to be honest, I, I started kind of afresh. I wanted to start like my own take and not kind of borrow from that stuff. So I really kind of just thought I'm going to bring my, because in the eyes of the audience, they will integrate. Mm -hmm. They'll put it together in the same suit. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't try to like copy it on Taylor. Like I kind of really just tried to start again something new. That was my take. Because you always need, you need fresh blood and fresh energy in a, in a show. It's been running 30 years. It's like Doctor Who, 60 years, right? They have to keep bringing in new juice. So I just had to bring in new energy. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, thanks. They got to go to the main stage. Can I have someone take a quick photo of us because I'm a fan first? Please. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting down real quick, real quick. Just before, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at like we were answering right. your question. That's for something. That's $50. Though. All right. <laughs> 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 Who's taking the phone? Oh, wait, wait. Hey, you're you're my phone? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's me, Karen Ashley. I am one of the co-owners of Ranger Stop and Pop. We had an amazing time this year in Atlanta, and we can't wait to bring Ranger Stop and Pop back to Atlanta. I just want to thank all of the fans, all of the attendees, all of our friends and family that came, supported the show. We had the most amazing vendors. We had the most amazing time. And you guys know, it's always morphin' time.